Welcome to this special panel on the Gambia at 58. Uh, as we all know, most African countries attain their independence in battlefields. But few others like the Gambia gain theirs around negotiation tables. The Gambia became independent on the 18th of February 1965, despite claims at some quarters that the country was an improbable state. I have with me two distinguished personalities in the studio to talk about series of activities or events that led to our independence. These are in the persons of a veteran educationist and a writer, Mr. Baba Silla, on my immediate left. And uh, on my immediate right, I have uh, Dr. Malam Fane, head of the Department of History at the University of the Gambia. Welcome to the program, gentlemen, and thanks for coming. Thank you. The theme for this year's independence celebration is um, democracy, a recipe for peace and development. We will certainly delve into the theme, mm -hmm. uh, but to put the discussion into perspective, I mm -hmm. uh, would want us to start with um, pre-colonial Gambia. The Gambia was first part of the Mali Empire, and then the Kabu Empire. We had uh, governance structures, uh, well-organized societies mm -hmm. prior to the balkanization of Africa and uh, colonialism. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to talk a little bit mm -hmm. of history because the day is a historic day. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not do justice without talking about history. Okay. Mr. Silla, um, you are one of the people who were around when all these things perhaps were happening, or at least you can recollect um, um, uh, at least a lot of things that happened prior to independence itself. Yes. Uh, take us through pre-colonial era in the Gambia, briefly. Well, very briefly, um, one could rightly say that colonialism um, started around the 1800. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Africa as we know it now, mm -hmm. with all this Balkanized states mm -hmm. came into effect in Berlin mm -hmm. in 1884. Mm -hmm. That was when all the European countries, mm -hmm. or most of them, knew that they had difficulties in acquiring resources that they needed for the development of their industries. Right. Now, this is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in Europe. Sure. So, therefore, Whatever resources they thought were available in Africa, they came and got mm -hmm. without, with impunity. Mm -hmm. Now, at that Berlin conference, not one single African was present when Africa's fate was decided among all these European countries. Now, each one of them had their own as King Leopold said, magnificent cake that he wanted to carve out of this magnificent continent. Therefore, King Leopold got what he wanted. He got Belgium, a huge, vast country. Um, Belgium can go into, into um, the Congo um, maybe more than 50, 60 times. That's just the Congo, not the entire Africa. Yeah, just, just, just the Congo. <laughs> Britain, one of the colonizers, one of the main colonizers, um, took on Nigeria. Britain can go into Nigeria four times. Now, not to talk about other small mm -hmm. states mm -hmm. like the Netherlands, uh, like Belgium. And it goes on and on and on. But basically, the reason why they came to Africa was to garner resources. Mm -hmm. But initially, mm -hmm. they were falling over each other and fighting over these resources and over, the, mm -hmm. uh, over these lands. But then they knew better. They went back to, to Europe and decided that they will all sign up to what was called the Monroe Doctrine. Mm -hmm. And that doctrine simply said, we can fight our wars in Europe and have our differences in Europe but in Africa, we are going to bury our hatchet. So that means mm -hmm. that Africa was a place where 
they will, according to the establishment, mm -hmm. set, mm -hmm. sow, plant mm -hmm. anything that could be used to develop their industries. Very well. Now, along with colonization mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. the introduction of the cash crop economies yeah. that were imposed on African countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Gambia mm -hmm. was made mm -hmm. to, to, to produce groundnuts. Mm -hmm. um, Nigeria, groundnuts, and whatever other resources were available there. So this was decided by the, the, the colonial masters? They decided that. And it was Not the indigenous? No, no, we mm -hmm. didn't decide that. In fact, a lot of people, I don't think many people know that, mm -hmm. Groundnuts was actually mm -hmm. not, 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 a, not, not an indigenous crop. It's not an indigenous crop. It was imposed upon us. Mm -hmm. It came from Latin America. Mm -hmm. Let me backtrack a bit mm -hmm. to, 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 to talk about uh, what happened when Africa was balkanized. Exactly. Now, to manage that, mm -hmm. they needed the connivance of um, people who were Africans and who will uh, be a part of the deal. Hmm. Now, after, after slavery, mm -hmm. um, it was, they, 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 after slavery came colonization. They came back to back. Yeah. They needed to, 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 to connive, find, find, find people who will find accomplices, mm -hmm. and they work with them. And the trade became so lucrative, but it also became very debauching hmm. to the extent that um, a lot of our people became part or and parcel of our colonization. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Silla, uh, after that brief um, introduction. Uh, let me now turn attention to um, Dr. Fane. Um, uh, we know that the British system of um, administration in Africa or in their colonies was indirect rule. Um, but can you take us through briefly the colonial structure of administration. Just to throw some little light on the pre-colonial era. Thank you. Because uh, uh, we had states, we have nations, mm -hmm. and then uh, the people in the Senegambia region mm -hmm. uh, had intergroup relations through trade, through marriages, especially long distance trade. Uh, there were connections that were established. And then with time, mm -hmm. uh, you we'll talk about the Kabul Empire mm -hmm. had spread its tentacles and then started dominating so many areas all over the place through mm -hmm. conquest sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, through migration also, people started migrating mm -hmm. from certain areas mm -hmm. looking for other places to have political dominance over uh, and so on. So in a and sense, there were kingdoms all over the Gambia or within the Senegambia region, even well before yeah, the arrival yes, of the there colonial There were there are so many kingdoms. We well so many kingdoms mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. uh, 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 mm -hmm. in existence. When they set, uh, established their dominance over the Gambia region, mm -hmm. they came up with uh, two systems of uh, administration. administration. Mm -hmm. So they divided the Gambia region into the colony and the protectorate. protectorate okay. So in the colony, mm -hmm. they used direct rule. Okay. But in the protectorate, mm -hmm. uh, they use uh, the indirect rule system mm -hmm. that they copied from what Lugard did, what Lugard did in northern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then in the protectorate, they had traveling commissioners mm -hmm. uh, that will supervise uh, the way people have to behave and then follow rules. Uh, that the, 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 the colony and the protectorate, uh, the, the colony was uh, mainly uh, Ban Greater Banjul area. Batos and then, and then some, Makati. Some, yeah, Makati, some yeah. other possessions. Okay. They, they, okay. They, they, they and got the rest of the country was, the of the was seen the, as the protectorate. Was seen as the protectorate. Okay. And okay. they introduced chieftaincy also. Okay. Uh, because traditional chiefs were also giving certain uh, responsibilities to carry on behalf of the colonial authorities. Yeah, in, in some places, uh, in, among certain groups of Gam uh, indigenous Gambians, mm -hmm. they already had that leadership structure. There was not much problem in those places. Where they had 
so much challenge was among the Jola in, in, in Fony. Mm -hmm. Because the Jola society was a very egalitarian society. Okay. So they didn't have kings and chiefs. Okay. So the British, mm -hmm. uh, to effectively uh, rule mm -hmm. the, those places, mm -hmm. they imposed chieftaincy on the Jola. So the structure was like this. At the head of mm -hmm. the colonial establishment mm -hmm. in Batos mm -hmm. was the governor. Mm -hmm. So below the governor, mm -hmm. you have traveling commissioners. Mm -hmm. You have one for the North Bank and then one for the mm -hmm. South Bank. Mm -hmm. So the traveling commissioners will get instructions from the governor, mm -hmm. then go to the protectorate, mm -hmm. and then uh, give the, pass the instructions mm -hmm. to the chiefs. Mm -hmm. Then the chiefs also will, uh, we are heading districts. Mm -hmm. So in every district, you have series of villages also. So every village has a head that we call Alcalo. Mm -hmm. So the Alcalos now also become answerable to the chiefs. Exactly. Um, during the colonial era, the administrative structure mm -hmm. was primarily based on what was called a legislative council. Exactly. Now that legislative council mm -hmm. was headed mm -hmm. by the governor himself mm -hmm. and some representatives from the, from the trading houses mm -hmm. and, um, and, and Europeans who were around. Mm -hmm. So none of us took seat in the, in, the, in the legislative council until much later, yeah. after the agitation yeah. of people like Edward and Francis Small, Francis yeah. Gandhi Randall, mm -hmm. Koto Richards, mm -hmm. Downs Thomas. Mm -hmm. Now these are the people who stood up mm -hmm. and said, we cannot have this to carry on. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the administrative justice was a sham itself mm -hmm. because no but he was consulted in the establishment of r r laws mm -hmm. and rules mm -hmm. that govern the society. Mm -hmm. They made them as they went wrong. And as long as it worked for them, it didn't matter whether um, uh, um, uh, 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 people were suffering as a result. So that legislative council, mm -hmm. to begin with, they tried to make a compromise. They said, ah, you know, typical. They said, all right, you know, let us get a Muslim in there. So they brought in Umar no Gorgi Usman Jang to begin with. Okay. Okay? But then they wanted to enlarge that. Mm -hmm. But they also knew that Gorgi Usman Jang and Shah Omar Fai, mm -hmm. Gorgi Shah Omar Fai mm -hmm. were rivals. So when it comes to voting, who do you think Gorgi Shah Omar Fai will vote for? Certainly not Gorgi Jang. Not, no, not, 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 yes. So this was what happened. Mm -hmm. It was this based on the, the same phenomenon of divided combat. Divide and rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that went on. And um, of course, they, br they brought in the Akus, who were mainly literate. Yeah. Um, and um, by 1942, yes. they caved in and made the biggest mistake of their life to bring in Edward, Edward Francis Small yeah. in the Legislative Council when Wilfred Davidson Carroll died. So um, uh, Edward F. Small was representing Banjul and uh, Combo in the Legislative Council. No, the Legislative Council, you didn't have any representation, which was why, which was why there was no such thing as a representation, which was why Small mm -hmm. made these demands from the, colonial, from the questions, colonial questions, mm -hmm. that there will be no, no taxation, taxation okay. without representation. Without representation. Right? Mm -hmm. Because people are being taxed. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were not being represented. That's right. That was one of the things that really irked Small and, 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 and his company. Small was a very defiant figure. I understand that he started um, resisting them when he was a clergyman in Balangar. You remember <laughs> the Balangar incident? Yes. And he had that uh, brouhaha with James Walker. Yes. And yes. then he decided to resign. Yes. Actually, James, um, um, Edward. What is it? Edward Francis Small. Um, started out his career in Freetown, okay. went to school there, okay. and then when he came here, he was appointed as a cost clerk. Okay. Later on, he got a job with the Maryland Prom. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, I'll come back to you, um, okay. uh, Mr. Silla. Okay. Um, we are going for a short break. All right. Um, uh, we are going to reflect a little bit on the Silver Jubilee Independence Anniversary, yes. uh, presided over by Sadawda Karaba Jawara. Mm -hmm. A 
the end of the parade, President Jawara addressed the school children. His theme this year was literacy. As we observe 1990 as International Literacy Year, let us together, parents, teachers, and the Gambian community at large, as a first step, vouch to live up to the challenge of wiping out illiteracy by encouraging literacy in our homes, at the Banta Bar, and in our different localities. By developing the minds and skills of our people, they are not only increasing their chances to become worthy and responsible citizens, but we are also enhancing the, de the development of the nation. Literacy is therefore crucial to the development of this nation's human resources. You will come back. Yes, Mr. Silla, you were talking about uh, some of the roles that um, Edward Francis Small played in Yes, small. You know, struggle to independence. Yes, small. Soon, soon enough, he realized mm -hmm. that he was up against the whole colonial establishment. So he then went to the Methodist Boys High School and taught there for a few years. Then he carried on and was uh, um, deployed by the Methodist Mission mm -hmm. at Balangar. Okay, he saw the injustices that were meted out. Mm -hmm to the ordinary farmers by simple, the simple things as weights weight and measures. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ask if a, a farmer brings his ground, mm -hmm. you put, put his ground on the scale, mm -hmm. and you tell him this is 20 kilos, mm -hmm. what does he know about 20 kilos? Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, we had the different system of weights and measures. People use what they call, what they, call they, they use baskets to measure things. But they also used other um, yardsticks for other things. But be that as it may, mm -hmm. when Small got to Balangar, he saw the injustices, he said, something has to be done about this. So therefore, he started to educate the farmers mm -hmm. about how they will prevent the, um, the trading company mm -hmm. from cheating them. And wh whilst, while, whilst we're talking about mm -hmm. this, the main trading company here, mm -hmm. all the colonial, the colonial establishment mm -hmm. all over had colonial trading companies that followed them. So the trade followed the colonization mm -hmm. and not the other way around. Right. So wherever, mm -hmm. whatever doors that the, the colonialists mm -hmm. opened, mm -hmm. the colonial trading company was there. And this was how the United African Company came here, right. which small called use the Africans cruelly. Mm -hmm. Because it was really mm -hmm a system mm -hmm. that completely overtook the trade in the Kenya country. Now, of course, they were followed by mm -hmm. um, the opening of ba Bathurst in 1816. Mm -hmm. um, and when Bathurst opened, mm -hmm. the trading houses in Gore, in, in, in St. Louis, okay. they all came here because Banjul mm -hmm. had a deep waterfront Sorry. and it facilitated the possibility of trade and ho t taking cargo mm -hmm. from here to, um, to, to, to Europe. Mm -hmm. And of course, the infrastructure was mm -hmm. developed mm -hmm. primarily for that. When I grew up in Banjul, mm -hmm. there was a mini rail link within Banjul itself, right? That Interesting. Yes, that ran from the ports, mm -hmm. from the harbor, mm -hmm. through, um, through um, Picton Street, Cameron, Cameron Street, mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. all the way to this place where they call Raimbam mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in, 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 in Banjul. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they had their tra colonial trading houses there. So it was easy that they will stop this bogey and they will take the goods and put them into their trading houses. So in the end, even ice cream was made by the colonial, <laughs> made by oh, the yeah. colonial trading Same company. Thing. So this issue of um, Having, having foreigners dominating our business sector, the commercial sector, it's not a new. It's not it new. It dates back to the colonial era, you're okay. telling us. I'll tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Now go down mm -hmm. to the ferry, mm -hmm. take a ferry ride to Bara. Look at the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Look at all those shops. Mm -hmm. You still have palm line. You will still, still see Vesia. 
you will still see moral and prom. Mm -hmm. You will still moral fresh. Mm -hmm. You will still see mm -hmm. Safao. Mm -hmm. You know, and it goes on and on and on. And that arc of the waterfront was also ideal mm -hmm. because this was where um, they, had, they, had, they had their storage. Mm -hmm. And each one of those colonial trading houses had their own wharfs. Interesting. So in the end, there was what was called Wafi Sanjali, mm -hmm. Wafi Pamla, Wafi pa Wafi Palmen, mm -hmm. um, Wafi Vasiak, mm -hmm. and on and so on and so forth. Thank you, thank yes. you, Mr. Sila. I'll yeah. come back to you, uh, um, Doctor. Um, Karabula, yes. Uh, you see, you've said mm -hmm. uh, Small was a combative personality. Ego, yeah. You see, that was the wrong impression mm -hmm. the colonial authorities. Okay, gave to the people gave at the time. Small. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, Baba has mentioned, a Gambian who stood and said that we do no representation without, without no, no taxation, no taxation without. without representation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Small mm -hmm. has set a newspaper mm -hmm. and started educating Gambians yes. about their rights. Mm -hmm. Sn Sn Small organized Gambian farmers mm -hmm. into cooperative societies mm -hmm. for them to work together mm -hmm. and call for right, uh, bargain for right prices for their mm -hmm. grains and their commodities. Mm -hmm. Who is the uh, dangerous element? The colonial. Was it the governor then or small? It was the governor. And then small, because of his activities, mm -hmm. small was sent on exile by governor habitat here. But the most interesting thing is, up to this moment as we are speaking, mm -hmm. Gambians mm -hmm. are still honoring that colonial governor. By, state, uh, by naming the only high school, mm -hmm. go state owned high school after mm -hmm. that go uh, colonial governor. Mm -hmm. As Amitage? As, as Amitage. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a colonial governor, mm -hmm. in my view, mm -hmm. cannot be served as a role model mm -hmm. for a Gambian child in 2020. Mm -hmm. In the archives, mm -hmm. everything they talk about small was he is a dangerous element. Mm -hmm. You've talked about the Balagat incident. Exactly. What provoked the incident? Yeah. On Just New Year's Eve, the ringing of the, the ringing of the bell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, 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 a James Walker, a, a James Walker, mm. a trader, yeah. complained that the town is uh, disturbing, disturbing him, him yeah. as a Christian. Yeah. That yeah. was not the. Yeah. He, he was just using that to mm -hmm. get the money. That's true. Um, um, now, apart from small, mm -hmm. I'm sure there were other people who also contributed significantly mm -hmm. uh, to the to our struggle for independence. Well, uh, there were so many. Mm -hmm. Okay, for mm -hmm. me. Uh, I want to re us to recognize mm -hmm. the efforts of the ordinary Gambians, the illiterate Gambians mm -hmm. at that time, people you call illiterate, mm -hmm. uh, women. Mm -hmm. the the, these are the people the, I refer the, to as the, 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 the invisible forces. The invisible forces. Yes. Because, for example, mm -hmm. Sadada, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Karaba Jawara played a very important role. Uh, P.S. Njai, mm -hmm. Gaba Jahumpa, mm -hmm. and so many other people mm -hmm. played significant roles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, Jawara mm -hmm. didn't form the PPP. Mm -hmm. It was only the people who formed the group and they invited him to lead them. And PPP, the, form, the, the, the formulation of PPP itself, I, I believe, was a way of um, protest against colonialism because the first name of the party, I understand, was Protectorate People's Party. And you mentioned earlier on, the yeah, British divided the country what, into what two. What happened was, mm -hmm. you know, the country where you had the Protectorate and you had the colony. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Silla did mention that the Aku mm -hmm. uh, were, elite, uh, were... They were illiterate. Mm -hmm. So, in, ba in, ba in Banjo, the Aku and then the Wolof embraced uh, Western education earlier than the other groups. Mm -hmm. So, the educated people in battles thought that mm -hmm. Uh, the colonial masters should leave and hand over everything to them, mm -hmm. so they should be in charge. Mm -hmm. So the protectorate people mm -hmm. were seen mm -hmm. as, uh, 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 as not part of the mm -hmm. establishment. Mm -hmm. So at some point, those people also felt that no, we are in terms of number, we are more. So the country belongs to us. So the problem is, it's not now. It's not now. Mm -hmm. Ethnicity and religion. Mm -hmm. For example, in uh, in, in battles. Uh, Jawumpa mm -hmm. formed a party exactly. along religious lines. Yeah, the Gambia Muslim the Congress. Gambia Muslim Congress. Yes. And Jawumpa mm -hmm. was tutored by small. And uh, talking about, still talking about invisible forces, uh, I always believe in giving credit where it is due. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that um, Hannah Foster was also, also played a pivotal role 
in our struggle yes. because um, he she was the one who sponsored or who was sponsoring um, uh, JC Fine, Reverend JC Fine, to, to form the first political party yeah. uh, in the government. Can you dilate a little bit on that, Mr. Silla? Uh, yes. Um, who is Hannah Han Foster? Hannah Foster mm. was one of the men among several women who stood up at the time, who understood the, um, the workings of politics. Um, she was one of the f supporters of Fay. Um, he did not sponsor Fay. Okay. He was part of the part, part, of, part the of the formation okay. of the um, of the of the Democratic Party. But it is important to also say mm -hmm. that um, PP, the formation of PPP was initially um, done by a man called Sanjali Bojan. The main principal contradiction mm -hmm. of colonization in the Gambia is the dichotomy between the rural and the urban. Hmm. The protectorate and versus the colony. colony. Okay. Now, Sanjali formed that organization uh, and they helped the people from the, uh, people from the protectorate because they were the people who were working here from the rural areas mm -hmm. were not even allowed, allowed to have their wives to come and join them. Can you believe this? It is something mm -hmm. that people don't mm -hmm. know. It's interesting. Right? Yeah. Now, um, it, uh, when, when J.C. Fai came and established the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. um, it was during that time that he stood up and like his predecessor, um, Edward Francis Small, mm -hmm. he also had the gumption mm -hmm. to stand up mm -hmm. to the colonial establishment and say, yes. no, no, no. In fact, as a result of his protestations, mm -hmm. he was suspended from the Legislative Council. Interesting. Now, it is also important to note the role of these colonial governors, mm -hmm. what they did here. Um, they changed the Legislative Council based on how they wanted it to be, so that their interests were procured. I was going to ask that question, um, uh, because we know that legislatures are always concerned with um, making laws. Yes. So uh, I was wondering what kind of laws were they <laughs> making at the time. Uh, were these laws that were meant to be, uh, benefit the natives, that is Gambians, or the laws were made only to serve their own It's purpose. to protect their interests. It's to protect their interests. It's to protect their interests. Yes. To understand also, one of the principles of the colonial establishment was <laughs> all developments in the colony <laughs> must be born out of the earnings of the colony. Exactly. Okay. They were not bringing any money from no. uh, anywhere to develop. So they were taxing the people. No. So they were lost. In fact, just to so keep in we, uh, we talk about grains, mm -hmm. we are talking about grains. Mm -hmm. There were even laws on grain seeds, uh -huh. seed storage in the, in, in the country. So every farmer, at the end of the harvest season, you must save a certain number of 10 times of ground. So that when the next uh, 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 growing season comes, uh -huh. there will be seeds for farmers to uh, use. So there were laws. There were laws on strange farmers. Uh -huh. These were migrant farmers who will come from uh, other uh, uh, regions are uh, like uh, Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, mm. and Guinea Mali come and cultivate mm -hmm. grains in this country. Mm. There were laws that govern uh, uh, the way they are taxed. Mm. You know, when uh, party politics came, mm -hmm. we had uh, some other people mm -hmm. from the protectorate, people mm -hmm. like al Haj Musa Njai. In fact, before 1960, I understand that uh, people like uh, al Haj Musa Njai were being harassed just because of, you know, they've decided to put their weight behind uh, parties like PPP. We are going for another short break um, uh, to look at uh, one of the independence anniversaries uh, presided over by former president Yaya Jame. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after the break. As history is at times written in terms of decades, the accomplishment of five decades of self-rule is indeed worth celebrating as a coll collective polity generally termed as Golden Jubilee. Thus, the theme of this address is a discourse on my government's path to transform the Gambia into an economic superpower.
Colonialism was an attempt to halt the internal development process of the peoples of the colonies. It was an exploitative system interested in securing monopoly on raw materials and markets established through violence, coercion, and the usurpation of political power. We, however, recall with pride and dignity that the colonized people in general and Africans in particular were determined to stop colonization through civil resistance and even armed confrontation. Therefore, on this historic day, we will pay tribute to the leaders of African independence movement and the masses that serve as their support base. We salute them not only for their triumphant stewardship of the independence movement, but for their search and rediscovery of our common African identity that colonialism sought to destroy through the balkanization of the African continent. In this regard, I must pay homage to Edward Francis Small, whose pioneering efforts my government has recognized and immortalized by renaming the then Royal Victoria Teaching Hospital after him. We also pay tribute to his other colleagues of blessed memory, namely Reverend John Qualify of the Democratic Party, the late I. F. Gaba Jahumpa of Muslim Congress Party, the late Pen S. Njai of the United Party, all of whom, in one way or the other, struggled to end colonial exploitation. Our homage also goes to the first prime minister and later became the first president of the Republic of the Gambia, Alahaji Sadauda Kareba Jaura, and his colleagues of the People's Progressive Party for their decisive role in the Gambia's independence. Um, uh, doctor? You were talking about um, uh, some of the key people who came from the protectorate um, uh, to the colony, the likes of Alaji Modu Musanjai and yes. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Alaji Modu Musanjai, mm -hmm. Alaji Bora Manjang, mm -hmm. and Alaji Malang Kante, mm -hmm. so who were provincial people mm -hmm. uh, uh, staying in battles mm -hmm. at that time, and they were into business, mm -hmm. and they became very influential and wealthy mm -hmm. business people, mm -hmm. and. When uh, party politics mm -hmm. came and then they invested a lot of their money mm -hmm. in making sure that the PVP got a lot of support mm -hmm. in both the colony and in the protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also came um, first representative institutions uh, in the Gambia at the time. That is the Battles Union District Council and the Board of Health. Uh, History taught us that these were the first institutions during the colonial era mm -hmm. where you had um, at least Gambian representation. Mm -hmm. How did they come about and uh, who were representing us at the initial stage, Mr. Silla? Well, the first, with the, first with the Battles um, uh, Union District Council and the Board of Health. Yeah, the, that went through uh, if, if some metamorphosis. Okay. Because it started out as with the Battles Town Council. No, okay. Battles um, Urban District Council, BUDC. Yes. And that uh, transformed itself to the Battles Town Council. Okay. And all of that mm -hmm. was a result, a result of the agitation yes. from the local people mm -hmm. who stood behind small and um, the town councillors and said, we are paying our taxes, therefore we must ask for where our money is being spent. And this was uh, the main reason mm -hmm. why um, uh, BTC went through all the transformation. But importantly, mm -hmm. um, 
the structure of the city council also changed. And um, it became more open to the people. And um, in Banjul, you had a hall where people went to, to have meetings and organize activities. But they also structured it in ways in which the cleansing services, mm -hmm. in those times, the, the, the cleaning of drains, mm -hmm. the, the cleaning of public places like cemeteries, parks, um, and streets were done. But with all the conflict conflicting judgments I have about colonization, mm. two things were important that they, they, they established. The working of the town council in Banjul, which later was transferred to the working of town council, um, the, what, are they, what are they called again? The councils in the rural areas. Okay. Georgetown Area Council, okay. Kerewan Area okay. Council. Okay. And area Bandung. councils, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But health wise, even though which was limited only to Banjul, at that time we played marbles in the gutters of the streets because they were so clean. The health inspectors walked around um, um, and inspected the gutters, took in water from the drain to see if they had mosquito larvae. The streets were, the, 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 the gutters were so clean that we could even catch fish in those gutters. I lived in Grand Street. Yeah. We caught yeah. little kujalis and <laughs> fish it's in these years. But also, mm -hmm. um, they had very effective, effective health inspectors who went home, to, into every home, mm -hmm. to see if people had cleaned their homes, mm -hmm. to see if they had rats, and other cancers of vermin in the homes. So therefore, they provided the means to eradicate them. So one may argue that um, uh, whatever they were doing at the time in the colony, yes. they did it because of themselves. They were living in the colony. They were living here. So not necessarily for the people. No, no. They were living here. Mm -hmm. And or not only that, mm -hmm. they had a hospital for the Europeans. That was the Royal Victoria Hospital? No, no, no. There was a hospital at the back of the Royal Victoria Hospital where Sadao there was a dispenser, there was, was a dresser dispenser and Uncle Keba Conte. But in that hospital, no African was, uh, was, was, was admitted there. It was only for Europeans, however, how poor, however poor they were, they were admitted in that hospital. Then, of course, the rest of the rural areas were left to languish in misery and illness and disease and poverty. Interesting. Um, so I'll come back to you. In, in addition to that, mm -hmm. you know, after 1945, mm -hmm. uh, the global economy mm -hmm. uh, went through a very serious transformation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the economy, the corner economy in the Gambia here mm -hmm. was highly dependent on uh, grains, particularly peanuts. Mm -hmm. And then to improve uh, peanut production, mm -hmm. a lot of schemes were established mm -hmm. to promote garlic production. And uh, one of the problems in the protectorate mm -hmm. was most of the farmers were complaining of pests that were destroying their grounds. Mm -hmm. And then it became a colonial government policy mm -hmm. to eradicate those pests that were uh, destroying, destroying the, the crops. Mm -hmm. So there was a deliberate government effort. Mm -hmm to poison mm -hmm. those wild animals that we are considered as pests in the protectorate. They were shooting them, killing them, and even poisoning them. So imagine now, uh, most of the farmers now also hunting, feeding on those wild animals exactly. that were poisoned by the exactly. corona government. Exactly. Exactly. That's why, that was exactly. one of the main factors where so, so many diseases mm -hmm. were killing at the time. people at, at, at the time. And, and also but the corona government never mm -hmm. take responsibility over that. No. For them, they were eliminating those pests mm -hmm. to promote just to pro production. protect their own interests. So own one, 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 one can also say that they contributed to the loss of our very valuable fauna. Certainly. And yes, flora. Yes, yes, <laughs> and, and the flora as well. Flora flora. Uh, interesting. Um, uh, doctor, um, before going back to mm. Mr. Silla, <coughs> uh, there, there has been a series of constitutional um, 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 amendments or constitutional development during mm. the colonial era before we attain our independence, notably 1947, 1961, and uh, 1965 and 1970, the Republican Constitution. 
Yeah, um, uh, can you take us yeah. through briefly? The colonial establishment authorities will just handpick people and put them there. For them to come up with laws that they will use to uh, subject Gambians into submission mm -hmm. and then economically exploit them in, uh, to their own advantage. So with time, uh, the structure of the composition changed and then as people started agitating mm -hmm. for some reforms, they have to uh, accept some of those demands that the people were making and then include people. And then by the 1960s, uh, the elections were conducted for Gambian representation in the uh, Legislative Council. Mm -hmm. But the people had to fight, particularly with Small at the forefront mm -hmm. and then some of his left hand supporting mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. So by 1961, mm -hmm. they had no option but to include that uh, elective uh, principle mm -hmm. in, the, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the constitution mm -hmm. so that we have some representation. Mm -hmm. And then by 1960, uh, party politics mm -hmm. was in high gear mm -hmm. and then uh, PPP won the elections in 1960. 60, 60, I think 61, 61. PPP got six, 8 seats and the UP got 8 seats. 8 seats and then subsequently yeah. PPP got six, eight, uh, that 10 was, seats and yes. so on. Because Jawara resigned yeah, but then he was a uh, Minister of Education. Then he resigned, he resigned because mm. he won, his party won the elections but yes. Pemja was uh, selected as the chief, uh, the chief uh, minister. Chief minister. Mm, yes. So he protested and then they had to even go up to London to... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, channel their grievances until mm -hmm. the system was changed. Mm -hmm. By 1963, mm -hmm. now we had internal self-government mm -hmm. and that was after the, Ma the Malboro conference, after uh, Malboro conference yes, in after 1962. The conference, yes. Okay. So we had the internal self uh, 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 rule, and then Sadawda was made the uh, uh, premier. Premier, premier. And yeah. by premier 1965. Minister. Uh, all the parties, you know, work collectively together to make sure that by 1965... Coalition, yes. coalition, coalitions amongst political parties were formed in this country as early as the... Uh, I think it was in 1965. Uh, that's interesting. Co yeah. Coalition is nothing new in this country then. Because yeah, uh, particular, was it PPP uh, formed a coalition with the Gambia Muslim Congress, Mr. Sila? Uh, yeah, they formed, a, um, they formed um, an alliance. An alliance, right with the Democratic Party and the Muslim Congress and the which was they were called the Alliance. The mm -hmm. Muslim Congress mm -hmm. and the, the, the Democratic Party formed an alliance with the PPP. They used to call it PPP DCA mm -hmm. Alliance. alliance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why they did that was um, first of all they realized that there's, there's value in coalescing, mm -hmm. in, coal uh, in coalescing. Mm -hmm. They also knew mm -hmm. that you had strength when you coalesce. And numbers, there was power in numbers. So all these calculations they made. Mm -hmm. However, there was a problem at some point uh, because um, when the governor mm -hmm. elected mm -hmm. Um, Pierre Njai, mm -hmm. as the chief mm -hmm. minister, mm -hmm. the reaction from the, the, the PPP mm -hmm. DCA members mm -hmm. within that council, mm -hmm. they all resigned. Jawara had left, he was in Nigeria, and that was where he printed the PPP manifesto. Mm -hmm. And the message was independence now. No ifs, no buts. Interesting. Right? And um, the, the, the governor was, didn't take too kindly to that. But in, in fact, when the governor left, Windley left, mm -hmm. he was a lawyer by trade, but he was disbarred. But one thing the colonial establishment has never uttered or said, why was he disbarred? Was it as a result of the misjudgment mm -hmm. that he made in the Gambia to the extent that he elected somebody who was not in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Council, the council. The council. Mm -hmm. Or was it for other reasons of misdemeanor? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's still shrouded in mystery. Interesting. Um, shrouded in mystery. We are going for another short break uh, to look at um, 
one of the recent independence anniversaries uh, presided over by His Excellency, the current President of the Republic of the Gambia, Mr. Adam Abaro. Your Excellency, the former President of the Republic of the Gambia, Dauda Kairaba Jawara, we acknowledge his coming to attend the 53rd independence of this beautiful country. Fellow Gambians, as we celebrate yet another independent day, and hence the theme of my address, focus on the new Gambia, for reflection and soul searching, for inclusive national development. Together we have also the new Gambia into a world of hope, while we shall jealously guard to preserve the freedom and the dignity of our people. Peace is priceless. That is why my government is willing to tirelessly work towards safeguarding this peace to be able to set our development agenda on the right path. We can only continue to enjoy a peaceful atmosphere if we embrace our diversity. Our citizens selflessly contribute to making the Gambia the best it can be. We will always have our differences, but we must learn to respect those differences. There is no correct perspective, but let us remember that despite our political, ethnic, economic, gender difference, we have one thing in common. We have one Gambia, and we are all Gambians. Uh, as you mentioned earlier on, Sadauda and uh, his cohort went ahead mm. to say independence now. No if, no but. Mm. Um, we are 58 years mm -hmm. along the line. But um, I want you to tell us briefly mm -hmm. some of the key development strides that were made immediately after independence. Um, independence, 18 February, mm -hmm. I was there as a schoolboy. Mm -hmm standing out there and I saw the British flag lowered down and the Gambian fight host hoisted. It was a period in which we were really hoping for a change and it was a period in which we had we were looking to a new Africa, to a new country. Mm -hmm. Now around that time too there were other pulses beating. Mm -hmm. We must not never ignore them mm -hmm. because it was the period in which other African countries mm -hmm. were also mm -hmm. bidding for independence or mm -hmm. on the verge of independence. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1961, 63, mm -hmm. they met at Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. And this was an important touchstone mm -hmm. in African history. Mm -hmm. This was the chance that African governments, mm -hmm. African leaders, mm -hmm. had to, 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 to chart the way forward for Africa. But they fell into a lot of acrimony, mm -hmm. a lot of argument, mm -hmm. a lot of disharmony. Mm -hmm. But all of this can be traced to the, hind, the hands mm -hmm. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. scenes mm -hmm. manipulating these leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to the extent that there were two forces. One of them was called the Monrovia mm -hmm. um, Group of Nations mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. And then the other was called the Casablanca Group of Nations. Exactly. Now the Monrovia Group of Nations, mm -hmm. which Sadado was a member mm -hmm. of, they favored a more gradualist process, of, process of, of uniting development. Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a ploy mm -hmm. for them to sit tight mm -hmm. until the rain is over mm -hmm. and then pass the buck over to someone else, we don't know. Yeah, but history mm -hmm. will be left to the historians. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to, to sort of assess that. That's right. I think that's important. Then the other mm -hmm. tendency mm -hmm. was the continental unitarian mm -hmm. um, 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 tendency, mm -hmm. which was led by people like Jamal Abdul Nasser okay. of Egypt, of Kruma. Egypt, mm -hmm. Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. In fact, African solidarity was so strong around the time mm -hmm. among some nations, mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. Guinea, mm -hmm. Mali, mm -hmm. There was, in fact, a big song, Ghana, Guinea, Mali. Now, internally, in now the Gambia, internally, mm -hmm. the institutions that were developed 
uh, I'm not sure if the right, right, right right after. Okay, what happened mm -hmm. after independence mm -hmm. is that we had in, in we had inherited and maintained the colonial apparatus, lock, stock, and barrel. Nothing changed. The mm -hmm. colonial infrastructure mm -hmm. was there, mm -hmm. and we had accepted a neo-colonial model for development. And as a result, mm -hmm. the trading houses that were here continued to trade as mm -hmm. much as before. Mm -hmm. There was no re reorientation of the economy mm -hmm. to move first of all away mm -hmm. from a monocrop monoculture, monoculture, mm -hmm. monocrop production. Mm -hmm. For goodness sake, mm -hmm. this was imposed on us. Why did we accept it? We did not think about how to diversify the economy. We did not think of how to change our educational system. Yes, I, I'll Thank come you. back to you. Let me just yes. um, uh, switch attention to Doctor. Yes. Just a little uh, bit before you, um, uh, he has just mentioned some of the shortcomings um, right after independence. But at some quarters also, they'll tell you at the time of independence, most of these institutions or ministries were not existing. It was the first government that decided to come up with most of these um, um, institutions like social security. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I am wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, despite all the shortcomings mm -hmm. the uh, forced the public had, mm -hmm. uh, but our civil service was very competent mm -hmm. uh, during that period. Mm -hmm. In fact, people were coming from all over Africa and elsewhere to learn best practices from our the civil, Gambian service, civil, service. Uh, civil service. And then uh, one of the greatest flaws of uh, Sadauda mm -hmm. was he wanted to be seen more like a father of democracy, champion of democracy, good governance here and there. Than a hardliner. So, yeah, than taking a hard uh, whatever, stance, stance against him. certain things, yeah. like corruption. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, uh, his hands were tied, he couldn't mm -hmm. fight corruption. And that's the same trend we are seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are seeing mm -hmm. in the present uh, mm -hmm. establishment. I want us to now delve into the theme for this year's celebration, yes. which is uh, democracy, a recipe for peace and development. As far as I'm concerned, it, it contains three indis indispensable concepts as far as our progress as a nation is concerned. Mm -hmm. That is democracy itself, mm -hmm. uh, peace, mm -hmm. and then development. I think these wo three words are very key in the development. Can you take yeah, us we through? We, we need to define huh? what we mean by democracy. Exactly. If it's a democracy mm -hmm. that is peddled to mm -hmm. us from the West, mm -hmm. let's forget it. Because there are so many contradictions. It's ill-defined and it's also a concept that is used when it's convenient for them. Look at the war in Ukraine. Don't this, people don't see the parallels between the war in the Ukraine mm -hmm. and in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Isn't it the same thing? Mm -hmm. Isn't it an imposition? It is. Why are we not? Uh, this is why I'm saying mm -hmm. democracy. Mm -hmm. I think I've written that somewhere mm -hmm. that democracy actually mm -hmm. died the day before it was, the day after it was. Born. It was born. Yes. But how relevant is so, the team to so the development? The, 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 the team is relevant. Mm -hmm. It is but, relevant. Uh, now. Mm -hmm. We cannot have peace, mm -hmm. we cannot have them claim to have democracy, mm -hmm. we cannot claim to have development mm -hmm. if the resources of the country are not equitably mm -hmm. distributed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, finally, finally, we are at 58, mm -hmm. and uh, we've no doubt made some significant achievements, but a lot more is needed. What is the way forward? Mr. Silla, to start well, with you. I have a hope, I have a lot of hope, mm -hmm. in that where the young people with great minds around, especially in the diaspora, mm -hmm. whose abilities mm -hmm. can be harnessed. Mm -hmm. um, I personally think that one of the things that, uh, that can happen is for us to establish institutions like recently we established the Nyang Sani Institute, mm -hmm. which focuses on research that will, that will mm -hmm. help and assist development, that mm -hmm. will assist policy formulation, mm -hmm. That will assist. Uh, that will guide youngsters. Mm -hmm. That will support them, and we're going to harness the capabilities mm -hmm. all around us. Mm -hmm. And the other possibility, I think, is for for the future, mm -hmm. is to try to mm -hmm. see how we can link mm -hmm. in with countries mm -hmm. around us and harmonize our economies so that we are not repeating the same thing in Senegal and Gambia. If electricity is produced in Senegal more, 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 uh, much better. Mm -hmm then let us work with Senegal. 
if Senegal is better at that or something else, if Gambia is better than something else, let us do that. But let us try to harmonize our economies. We cannot depend on mm -hmm. the Bretton Woods institutions mm -hmm. for our development and our salvation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Your take yes. on the way uh, forward? Uh, yes, we have to invest in education and agriculture. Uh, technical vocational education uh, can be uh, supported by government and all stakeholders so as to help us create jobs and the manpower that we will reach there. Thank you. We will reach there. Those were the words of um, uh, Dr. Fane and uh, Mr. Baba Silla, a veteran educationist, and uh, Mr. Fane, who is also the head of the History Department at the University of the Gambia. Um, it's been a fruitful discussion. I hope we'll all drive some valuable lessons from this interaction. Um, on this note, I want to seize this opportunity to first thank my eminent panelists for coming and uh, also my te able technicians for studio operations. But uh, more importantly, I want to seize this opportunity to wish you all a pleasant 58th independent anniversary. Thank you. Thank you.